There is one thing that connects nuclear explosions, some of the biggest blackouts in history, Pelé becoming one of the best football players on the planet, and weather forecasts. Plus, there's a handful more things. Let me tell you about them. In 2006, the Norwegian Pearl, a jewel-class cruise ship, had to pass under a power line crossing the Ems River near Wiener. Germany. The power line crossing was scheduled to be disconnected for the passage of the ship. The ship harbor from which the Norwegian Pearl was coming requested to anticipate the crossing by a few hours. The unexpected change caused a blackout. A small one though, uh, only the local grid was overloaded and shut down, but the entity managing the disconnect started panicking and getting seizures and so they just improvised and thought that disconnecting a random portion of the network would get the energy back up. 28 seconds. That's how long it took for the blackout to propagate from Wiener to Poland, France, Luxembourg, Portugal, Spain, Morocco, Greece, Italy, the Balkans, and many other places. Over 10 million people were affected. When you have a big enough clump of enriched uranium and shoot some neutrons at it, some will hit impurities inside of the clump, like uranium-238 atoms, and nothing will happen. Other will hit uranium-235 atoms, which will fission and emit another couple of neutrons each, and those could hit other uranium-235 atoms, which would propagate the reaction. With every fission, a bunch of energy is also released. When each splitting atom causes more than one other atom to split, you get a growing chain reaction, until within one second you get the Hiroshima explosion. The fission process takes less than one microsecond. In one second the fireball reaches its peak size, a diameter of 274 meters, and all it takes is a few neutrons. Less than one kilogram out of the 64 underwent fission, and during this process only 0.7 grams of it were converted into energy, heat and radiation. In 1961, mathematician and meteorologist Edward Norton Lorenz was running some weather simulations on a rather primitive computer. At some point, he decided to restart the calculations from a past moment, in order to closely re-examine what happened. On such a simple machine, to rewind the simulation, Lorenz had to manually rewrite the contents of the memory of that specific moment into the computer. And that's what he did. After one hour, the computer had simulated about two months of weather, and its results were completely different from the results of the previous simulation. Lorenz immediately thought that a vacuum tube in his computer must have been broken, but after further inspection, he noticed that the values of the simulation slowly deviated from the ones of the original run. At first, the values differed by the tiniest noticeable amount. The error then moved up by one position, then two, then three, and soon enough the values took a drastically different direction. Lorenz later explained this with an analogy. One flap of a seagull's wings could change the course of weather forever. The metaphorical seagull was later euthanized and replaced with a much cuter butterfly, giving us the famous butterfly effect. And this exact thing happened with the 2006 blackout. One local network failure led to a continent-wide shutdown. And just like that, a handful of neutrons kick-started a chain reaction that within one second pulverized tens of thousands of people. A bunch of neutrons started that. Let's say you're making a million dollar stock transaction. Your enemies have an interest in knowing whether you'll be going to selling or buying a lot of stocks. So you use an encryption system to send secret messages to whoever manages your stocks. In some weak ass encryption systems, if you change only one part of the original message, only a specific part of the cipher text changes. For a crypto system to be safe, it has to exhibit what's known as the avalanche effect, meaning that every single time that you change just one symbol in the original message, roughly half of the cipher text changes. This makes it way harder to to use your previous messages to decode the next message you're going to send. Satellite orbits usually fall into one of three categories, low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit and geostationary. Most commercial satellites are in low Earth orbit and so is most of space debris. 25,000 pieces of debris larger than 10 centimeters, half a million between 1 and 10 centimeters and over a hundred million particles above one millimeter. 
A lot of these particles are traveling at speeds close to 7 km per second. That is 26 times the speed of sound. The fastest aircraft ever made, the NASA X-43, could only reach Mach 9.6. Even a piece of debris as tiny as a few millimeters carries enough energy to destroy a satellite. Hitting a satellite with one would compare to hitting it with a 15 kilogram cannonball traveling at 100 kilometers per hour. And that satellite would break apart and release more high energy debris, which could hit more satellites, which would generate more debris, and this could go on until a whole field of debris encompasses our planet. This would make the low Earth orbit unusable for millennia. On the bright side, we could still go to space as the probability of being hit while passing through the debris field for only a few minutes would be negligible. The butterfly effect is simultaneously one of the most depressing and inspiring things that exists. On one hand, it tells you that the tiniest event outside of your control could ruin your life forever. But on the other, it tells you that all positive change, no matter how apparently insignificant, could drastically improve your life and maybe the whole world.